up here. Are you doomed if you can't find your why? Now, understanding what drives you is obviously gonna give you momentum towards your journey of success and happiness and fulfillment. But there's so many people out there that are confused because they haven't found their why. And it's almost like they're putting off taking action towards their why because they haven't found their why. They feel that something's wrong with them because they don't know their why. And it's like life is anything and everything or nothing unless you know your why. And I think that's a problem and I think I've got some solutions that can help you. So the first thing is, yeah, some people from the outside looking in look like they've got a why. You know, maybe they were abused. Maybe they had a significant emotional event that traumatised them that they're using as fuel. Maybe they have an extreme passion and, and they just love to do something more than anything in the world. But those people are actually quite rare. And what is way more common is the following, and this might be you. One, people who have more than one why. You know, their kids are important to them, but so are some of their hobbies, and so is their profession. So that's one. Two, people that their whys change. So when you're single and you're starting your business, your why is different to maybe when you've got a couple of kids who are young. That's the second thing. The third thing is, I believe the need to have a selfish and selfless balance. So some, some people, if their why is so much something or someone else, like children, for example, well, what about you? I'm sure any mum on this live stream and listening to this podcast can relate to the fact that when you had kids, you probably put them way above your own needs and you felt lost from time to time. You thought, well, what's my identity as a person? Me, independently, not just as a mother, a carer and a taxi driver to my kids. Um, if, you, if you can relate to that as a mum, um, just say yes in the threads on the live video. So some things I think can help you on the pursuit of your why. Number one is finding your main massive big eureka why is not the be all and end all of life. Some people have found that and they're lucky with that because they have a concentrated set of values i.e. There, there is one main thing that's really important to them because that's just who they are. I am the sort of person, for example, I don't have one overarching huge why. I love my passions. I love my professions. I have multiple interests. I have generated multiple streams of income. I've got multiple businesses. I'm interested in music, hi-fi, watches, cars, art, social media. And so if I'm reading, you know, Find Your Why by Simon Sinek or, all the, Sinek or all these people who are talking about you must have your why, my, your one big why, then I would just be lost. I would never do anything. I'd feel like there's something wrong with me. I would feel like I'm flitting between passions and professions. When in reality, I've come to terms with the fact that my why probably changes. It definitely grows. I mean, when I was 26, it was a selfish why of getting out of debt. And then it was to, um, you know, make five grand a month. And then it was to become a millionaire. And then when I got to a certain net level of net worth, I wasn't really bothered about my net worth anymore. I mean, you know, of course, we all want to make more money, I'm sure. And it's OK to admit that. But my why became about impact and reach. Um, about giving and creating value. You know, my podcasts become a big part of my identity now of who I am. One of my big whys is to meet really interesting people. In the 400th episode of my podcast, we had Jake Wood, we had um, Kevin Clifton, we had Ricky Wilde, who's Kim Wilde's brother, who's band member, he's um, sold 20 million albums. And meeting amazing people like this is definitely a big passion of mine. So you can have multiple whys, that's okay. You can have some selfish and some selfless or one selfish and one selfless why. And make sure at least one of your whys is selfless. Otherwise, you're always going to be putting yourself below everyone else. And in the end, you'll regret your kids and you'll re regret your friends and your family and your clients who you always put first uh, and never actually thought, well, who am I? The third thing is you don't have to wait until you've found your why to start your business or to test ventures or to try some of the hobbies and the passions that you love. And I do speak to a lot of people who are sort of starting their business and they've been waiting for a year or three years and that well, I haven't found my why and I haven't really got this motivation and drive and maybe I'm too comfortable and I don't know. So start testing, 
Go and try a passion, try a business model, create an, a minimum viable product and put it out to the market and see how it goes. You can always uh, take it off the market. You could always refund a few clients if you wanted to stop that. I saw Tim Ferriss recently tested fan funding on his podcast. Um, he, he thought it might work. Then he realized why it didn't. Then he wasn't surprised that it didn't. He's gone back to an ad revenue model and he's just refunding everyone who, was, um, who became part of his fan funded platform. He tried it, it was great. It, it, well, it wasn't great, but he tried it and it was great that he tried it. So you can try things. And you know, if they fail, you can always um, recover or try again or make it right. So I think finding your why actually is not like a, a one day, one moment, Eureka, cue the old spice music, all the lights go down except the spotlight on you. Da, 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 I found my why. It's not like that. I mean, okay, for a few people it is. And often that is driven by voids and pains. Like I said, significant painful events or abuse or you know, a, a lack of um, good parenting or feeling alone or lost or not feeling valued. Certainly for me, a big part, driver of my why is um, being overweight as a kid and feeling like I was bullied and not loved or respected or admired, admired or even noticed. And a big part of that is me c continually seeking that. But that's also pain as well as it is pleasure. So let me summarise for you um, and let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to listen to a recording of this, it'll be on one of my podcasts, either Money or Disruptive Entrepreneur. You don't have to stop all things. All bets are not off. You can start testing products and services and passions and professions while you're trying to find your why, number one. Number two, you can still be motivated. You can still be driven without a big why. Just think about what drives you. Maybe the attainment of pleasure, maybe importance, maybe respect, maybe results, maybe money, maybe success. You may be accreditations, maybe hitting goals. All of those are motivating. You don't need one overall arching um, why to be motivated. A lot of people are saying, well, I, I, I'm comfortable and I'm not motivated because I don't, find my, I don't know my why. But there are so many other things that can motivate you. So tune into them. Number three, I keep searching, keep searching, keep searching, keep searching. You haven't found it today. You don't find it tomorrow, but one day you'll find it. Accept and allow the fact that it might change. Um, so see the finding your why as a progressive journey rather than a one day or one eureka moment. Um, what else did we cover? Let me know in the comments if you can remember what else we covered. Um, significant events can change your why. Therefore, be ready for that. Um, test stuff all the time. Test new products, new businesses, new passions, new professions until you land on something that works really well for you. Don't hold so much pressure and, oh, well, everything's about my why because then you just put a lot more pressure on yourself and everything else kind of, um, if you like, gets depositioned beneath it. And just go out there and explore. Go out there and enjoy yourself. Try and learn a bit more about yourself, what motivates you, what drives you. Um, get involved in communities. Ask other people what they think about what seems to drive you. Um, and I think uh, you'll have a better journey and, and less um, beating yourself up, less void, less feeling like there's something wrong with you. Now, one final point, and that is comfort. Now, comfort is often the enemy of greatness. And a lot of people realise now that they're pretty comfortable. And therefore, why don't I go and do 30 viewings you know, a month? Uh, why don't I hustle hard and get my minimum viable product out to the market quickly? Why aren't, aren't I, why aren't I using multiple streams of leads? Why aren't I leveraging all the social media channels? Well, comfort. Comfort is often the enemy of greatness. And I think that's where a lot of people are. Well, I don't have this big overarching need and desire. So again, look at what motivates you. What's going to you know, put, put a bit of a rocket up your backside? Because we're all motivated by something. It might be competition. It might be bets. It might be public declarations. Um, it might be challenges. You know, a lot of people are doing these challenges at the moment. There's so many things that really motivate you. And once you understand what motivates you and not just placing it on your why, I think you can have these short, sharp bursts. People are, or everything is like, uh, it's, it's, it's great or it's terrible. Or if I don't get it right now, I'm doomed. But actually, you can have micro challenges. Every week you can set a new challenge. Every week you can remotivate yourself. You know, like if you want to lose a bit of weight, well, just think, think about, um, okay, I'm going to set a week's challenge instead of thinking, what's my why to lose weight forever? Because it's, it's the pressure that it loads on you. Anyway, I think I've rambled enough now. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Um, if you're watching the live, this will be on my Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast probably, so make sure you're subscribed. Um, and for everyone listening and watching, um, in a few weeks' time, I'm going to do a supporters week. 
Uh, now I have 1,070 supporters who get Ask Me Anythings, they get um, live content from me, and this is, these are, this is content that I no longer do for the public. They get random lunches with me, um, they get two one-to-ones a year, well, the, the first hundred do, but I've, I've been doing a lot more than that. There's WhatsApp groups that we're in. I do specific podcasts for them. I gave them free tickets to the 400th podcast episode. I gave them free tickets to Mindset and Money. These are all paid for events. Um, so keep your eye out for that. But to be in the supporters week, you're going to need to be a supporter. So I'm going to spend all, you know, most of all day, every day for a week, doing different challenges and value for my supporters. It's just £3.49 a month, so it's nothing. I'm sure anyone who's here who's a supporter, you can see because it's a supporter on their badge, will testify to the fact that um, the value is amazing. We're creating an amazing community. There's many great friends that have, have been forged in partnerships. We had a supporters only event. We had 140-ish people there just this weekend. Um, so all you need to do is find the become a supporter button, which is a long, thin blue button. Um, on my Facebook page, if you're watching this video, it'll be there somewhere, and just click it and become a supporter. Um, I, I'm one of the first um, influencers, as people call them, uh, in the UK to have the um, supporter facility with Facebook. It's a, a test that they're doing, um, and it's really becoming something special, and I'm, I, I get as much value out of it from all the, um, you know, the fans and the feedback and the, the things you hold me to a higher standard to do. Um, so jump in while you can, jump in before it goes up in value, jump in before maybe they stop it completely. So just find the Become a Supporter button. You can cancel at any time, it's just three forty nine a month. Um, it's the long, thin blue button on Facebook. And if you're listening to the podcast, you'll need to go onto my Facebook page, um, which is Rob Moore Progressive on Facebook to find that. So thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.